Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Mindy at the Scoville Zoo. Hello. Hello. So, what do you have? So, what do we have over here? Naked mole rats, which aren't exactly naked because they do have around a hundred hairs so we can't call them completely naked but that's their name so um, they are rodents um, pretty much hairless rodents that uh, live their life underground so they like to tunnel and burrow around and they have these specialized teeth that are really good at, at helping them dig some holes and move some dirt around and uh, the really interesting thing about these guys is that they have a, a social hierarchy like uh, bees and other insects where they have a queen who's kind of the boss and she's the only one that has offspring and then there's a lot of workers and they have different jobs like protecting from uh, predators coming in or other mole rats trying to come in their territory um, so they kind of are the guards and then there's the workers um, so it's it's pretty neat to watch these guys work um, the substrate we put in here um, in the morning we'll even them all of it out and we'll fill it up and then we'll come back later and they have moved all of the shavings to the end of the end of the row there so they like to uh, they like to move the stuff around and they have specialized uh, areas where they like to have um, for example the last square there is their toilet chamber so this is the place where they like to use the restroom. So they like this to have a lot of shavings. So they will move it all down here. And um, so that's what they do underground as well. They make their chambers just the way they like them. So this is their food chamber. And it's where we put most of their food. Uh, daily they get fruit and veggies and a monkey biscuit that's got some nutrients they need. A little bit of dog food and greens. Uh, in the wild, they eat tubes and roots and stuff like that. So um, we have to kind of give them a little bit of a different diet here than what they would eat in the wild. This chamber, they kind of just pass through a lot. They don't do a whole lot in this one. Um, and this is their nesting chamber. And they sleep in there. There's actually a small heat pad under there and they like it to be very warm. Because of course, when you don't have any hair, you get cold. So they like to lay in that corner so obviously they have the different chambers. Did you decide which chamber was which or did they? No, we didn't actually. We, we knew that we wanted to start out with about four chambers and eventually we're going to um, put some tubes and maybe go up a level and have like another level because uh, a lot of other zoos have kind of upper levels to their exhibits which are really cool too. But we started out with these four and we just put the same amount of substrate. They like to tear up cardboard and paper towel and boxes and stuff so we put different boxes and PVC tubes and whatever we can think of to enrich them and, and make it feel like they're really underground and have lots of tunnels. Um, and they decided on their own which one that they uh, kind of wanted to use for what. We knew that they would probably use this one a lot because of the heat pad though. Of course they want to be warm. And how many um, mole rats do you have in your colony? Right now we just have six. Um, we had more but um, we uh, we lost a few a couple of years back, and so we're just sticking with this group now. But I think at some point we may get a bigger a colony because in the wild they have 30 to 100 mole rats in their colony, so a lot more. And I was doing some research on the signs that you have back there, yes. and they have huge tunnel systems out in the wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have like 100 members, you have to have a lot of space. Yeah, it says they're 20 football fields, so if you think of, um, you know, a 100-yard football field, that's a long distance for little mole rats to, to travel and, and, uh, and dig those long of tunnels. So it's, it's really impressive what these guys can do if they get together and uh, get determined and to do something in one area. So what are some cool adaptations that these uh, mole rats have for surviving? Because obviously they're very bizarre animals. They are bizarre. I would say, you know, that the teeth, um, their incisors actually can move separate of each other. So um, I, I've seen that some people explain it like chopsticks. So that's kind of weird that they can move like that. And um, obviously not having the hair keeps them cool, um, and, you know, because it's very hot uh, where they're native to. And, um, and their eyes are, are kind of weird to me. Um, they, they don't need to see a lot, so they just have these little bitty eyes and they don't have that, that much vi that very good vision, but um, they don't really need it. So they, they've, learned to, um, they've learned to 
to not really necessarily depend on things they don't need, but then emphasize the things they do need, mostly being their teeth. Let's get a closer look at those teeth anyway. See if they want to come out for a sec. Then we can show you what we're talking about. It's okay, guys. Mm -hmm. You just see how small the eyes are, too. See those teeth? Made for digging. And you can see when you look really closely, they do have a few hairs, just not many. It's crazy how tiny those eyes are, but especially when they're uh, digging underground, they don't really don't need all big old eyes. Yeah. So how do you tell these uh, mole rats apart from each other? That's a good question. So here at the zoo, we do have several animals that all look exactly the same, like the prairie dogs and these guys. And so they all actually have a microchip in their back. If you look closely, there is a little bitty tiny microchip right there in their back. So the vets put that in and we have a special reader and we can grab uh, one and use the reader to tell which number it is. And then like when we weigh them to keep track and make sure they're healthy and they weigh enough, we can um, easily tell them apart from their microchip in their back. So besides their uh, teeth uh, being like, outside of their lips, I don't know if we can get that on camera, but they're also cancer resistant from what I've read. Yes, isn't that really neat? They've never been able to find any any kind of cancer in, in a mole rat. And I don't think that they figured out exactly how that is that they've been able to do that, but they're pretty much considered cancer resistant. That's crazy. That, that could help us, you know, in the future try to figure out, you know, how we can help people with that. So they have the tiny tail. Oh, I just got pooped up. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> but with the tiny tail, how does that help them underground? Um, I'm not sure what their oh, what, what their what their tail what the purpose of the tail is when they're when they're digging around and stuff. Um, I'm sure that they can feel things with it, so maybe it kind of helps them with orientation where they are and whatnot. So after I got myself all cleaned up, mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for letting me interview about You're interview you about the naked mole rats. <laughs> And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week.